Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and here we have a lovely padlock body. This is the Multi Lock G Series, the 55P, P for protected shackle. It's a closed shackle version. And this padlock with the, I think it's either a Series 1 integrator core or the, um, or it's just a 7x7 garrison with a, um, a strange pin number three. I'm not entirely sure which um, inside it. Now, I this was sent to me by subscriber Adrian. Uh, it was a found lock with no key, caked in dirt and grease. And when I say caked, I mean that grease was old. It was dry and it was plentiful. It, it was almost stopping the entire thing from opening, closing, turning, everything. Uh, it took a while to pick because obviously the feedback inside was dead. So um, it's been completely stripped and cleaned. I got a key from an, uh, a natural uh, a garrison and I got some pins from another um, lock and pin this up to this key and yeah I think we did a pretty good restoration but like I said I don't know whether this is the garrison or maybe like a series one integrator it's not the later integrators I don't know let me know in the comments either way if you know anything about multi-locks you know that the garrison and the integrator basically pick the same so no biggie right um yeah let's uh let's have a pick and a gut and um we'll see where we get to so we're in the vice this is the bitting of the key it's not too bad it's got some um I think zero lifts in position uh, one, two, and four here. Uh, no, five there. It's a seven pin lock, I keep forgetting. With some high cuts and some medium cuts in there, thrown in for good measure. The key actually works surprisingly smoothly, um, of course, like all these good locks. The, the key weight does have a bit of play in there. I think it's been very well used in its lifetime. But I wanted to restore this lock because finding these uh, multi lock half euros to fit these g-series are a bit of a pain uh, it's easier just to donate pins from another uh and <laughs> and key from another lock say an integrator or a um, um a garrison anyway so right let's throw some tension in we only have one choice we have to tension clockwise which means i'm going to pick anti-clockwise uh, i've got a nice long turning tool which goes all the way down the keyway which means i can sort of use it to rest the pick on all the way down. Uh, and yeah, we just go down the lock and we're just trying to find any binding pin. It feels like pin, um, the pin at the back, pin seven. Let's reset that a minute. Yeah, here we go, pin seven. Little click, back through, uh, into a bit of a false set. That's pin four there. I must have tapped pin five to put me into that initial false set. This is pin three. Again, just tiny movements there. Uh, that's pin two. So one feel set, two feel set, uh, three bit of counter rotation for nothing, five nothing, six now give me some counter rotation all the way up. And I dropped a pin, which is uh, great because it shows, you know, they've got some really good tolerances. Feels like pin five there. There we go, and we have the open. So we should be able to take this out of the vise, and I'll show you the open. Um, now, what's interesting is that this is a little bit sticky still. The, <laughs> the um, well, I'll show you when I got this, but there we go, got that open. Down here on the shackle side, uh, there's an extra long, what would be a ball bearing, but it's actually more like a lozenge shape. And it's, I think there's loads of grease on the inside here where I couldn't really clean and it just makes it very sticky so when you open the lock you just need to sort of tap the um, uh, that ball bearing out of the way uh, to get that to be opened right so let's now gut this if I remember how uh, I need some screwdrivers so uh, got to find I've actually got a a whole load of drawers that I've just set up at the back here, which is really cool. There's a screwdriver. That should work. There we go. So, oh, got all sorts of bits falling out there. We've got the um, restrictor plate, which stops it from uh, over rotating at the back. Um, I'll tip out the ball bearings for can. And there's that lozenge shaped one, which is got lots of um sort of grease on it but just it does get sort of sticky in there it's a bit dirty down there I'll move that to one side i shall reassemble all this a bit later um it's got some real lock lubricant in there 
I'm going to lock this back up because there's no need for this to be um, as it is yet. So I'm just going to pop the back off so I can find my circuit remover. Should just be able to pop that off with a gut wrench. There we go. And then I can use the key and a shim. So turn that. I'll get a shim on there. So my pins are going to be here. I'm going to turn them that way a little bit. I'm going to get a shim on the inside because I can. And when you can shim, you should shim. Um, if I can get that right. And then get my follower. And then gently just push this out. There we go. Right. So when I restored this, pin three, which you'll see in a minute, um, very cool by the way, uh, is a bit different. It seems to sit in this long uh, sort of cut. I don't know why. And the only thing I did was it was a smidgen too tall when I um, restored this because it's the only pin I couldn't replace. So all of these are standard uh, multi-lock pins, no different to ones I took out. This one here is, uh, I just had to gently file the top flat so that uh, it would open, but everything else is exactly how I, I found it essentially. Um, apart from, like I said, that third pin, which I'll show you if I can get out. There, got it. Um, and that's it, really. It's not, not particularly special, but it does have a strange little uh, sort of chisel shape on it. Uh, I'm aware that the key might not have a cut on it, which, so cut three might not be the right cut, but um, I don't have whatever key was supposed to be for this lock, and this works absolutely fine and reliably, so I'm not going to complain. Um, you've got an anti-drill sort of ball bearing down there, so you can't drill the side of the lock. Uh, so that's kind of nice. And then this is all exactly the driver pins that were inside here. So these weren't uh, replaced at all. And I love these multi-lock spools. They're so lovely and long. Um, you can't help but love them because that you really get that amazing counter rotation. In fact, I would say in some regards, it's the weakness of the multi-lock um, garrison and integrator that the spools are so uh, thin and long because it means that you get the best feedback ever. As, you know, you get that counter rotation, you know exactly what's happening inside this lock. And that's why I always say to beginners, if you're learning to pick, um, uh, dimple locks, don't be afraid of getting a multi-lock, even though they're a high security brand, the fact of the matter is, is that they give the most reliable and best feedback out of, um, well, some of the best out of uh, a lot of the locks. So you see there we've got all standard key pins, apart from this torpedo pin, which is obviously a, 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 a trap. And that does correspond with a virtually zero lift pin, so it's very easy to accidentally overset this and then fall into that ball. And the only way to do anything about that is to reset the whole uh, lock. We've got these lovely, like I said, these super tight, lovely spools, very long, very nice, great feedback. Uh, all driver pins, one to um, six, and then pin seven was a steel standard. Um, yeah, super cool. Like I said, I don't really know the function of this pin. Um, I think it sits a bit lower in the keyway, but other than that, I, I can't really tell you. It doesn't seem to impact picking at all. Um, so yeah, anyway, that is Adrian's uh, renovated multi-lock, possibly integrator, possibly garrison in a G55P body. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And if you've got any comments on this video, anything that, to tell me about this lock or what model it really is, um, please drop them in the comments below. So I do read all comments and reply to as many as I can. And I'll see you all.
next time.